Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back on another video from Explanation Point. Um, we checked out the Mashoko Tensei one, and I thought it was quite an interesting one. I didn't agree with everything in the video, and a few of you pointed out uh, a video that someone made, like debunking and disagreeing with everything that he said in that. But during that video, he mentioned this one, <laughs> which is the anime where a boy marries a moomin. And I just had to, had to know, you know? I just needed to to know curiosity really has taken a hold of me on um on this one but uh yeah <laughs> and thanks to the new uh, new patrons um yeah like every week i'll be uploading like a patron only um reaction video and you get your name at the end of every video I upload just one dollar a month so um thank you for for that that's cool but yeah let's get into this um the anime where a boy marries a moomin there was a time in my life when I did not watch anime. I was young, innocent. I had never been to Belgium. He <laughs> How random, okay. People around me would talk- Oh, he's got the mask on, so this was like- Is this during COVID times? About the great works of the movement. About full metal alchemist brotherhood. The movie Conqueror of Shamba- Hey, that's alright. It's alright, film that. It's alright, film that. Neon Genesis Evangelion Kiss X Hunter. And I wanted to experience <laughs> those for myself. So I went to Belgium. I watched anime. Some of it was good. When I left Belgium and returned to the worst good place, I brought anime with me. I wasn't only watching it, I was talking about it on the internet. At yep as my full-time job. Cool. I was obligated not only to delve into the classics that I'd seen held in such high regard, <laughs> yeah. but to seek out new and different animations that were, as the kids say, strange. I watched strange. the one where the girl becomes the internet. I watched the one where the skeleton oh, runs yeah. a bookstore. I watched the one where the talking giraffe makes theater kids stage fight in a high school time loop. Still, I was not sufficiently educated. <laughs> <laughs> like good Professor Dyer in Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness, I dug deeper and sought out new and horrible truths purely for the sake of my own abject fascination. I watched the one where the man can't decide which eight-year-old to have sex with, so he just chooses all of them. Oh, what? No. Oh, God. There is some weird stuff out there. What? I watched the one that shot in first person, where you, the viewer, get down on all fours and beg different women to see their panties and part- That's a thing. That's- this is- I knew there was weird anime out there, but I can't help but feel he's building up to the most weirdest thing. Some of it were legit kind of funny. I watched Conception. These did not break me. I understood that. I tried watching the first episode of Conception when that first came out. I was just, no. I knew that they were speaking to the basest parts of humanity in their audience. Today, I share with you the show that broke me. Jingai San no Yome is based on an ongoing four-panel manga series, which means that despite... Wait, I remember seeing, huh, I remember seeing the, someone mentioned, hmm, hmm. Despite my having seen all of it, there is still more of it. There is no official English translation, but this website translates the title as The Evildoer's Wife, though Wikipedia seems to prefer Non-Human Creature's Wife. Non -human my anime list wife. classifies it as a romance show, a comedy, and a fantasy. It is a horror, wrapped in a cute exterior <laughs> that reveals more darkness the longer it watches you. Let us begin. Oh Episode 1, Jingai San no Yome. This is 16-year-old Tomori Hinawa. In Hello. two and a half minutes, he will be married to a moomin. We start with a montage of the boy leaving his bed and preparing for school, where nothing out of the ordinary will happen. That looks weird. His hair lets the viewer know that he has a bright future ahead of him as a Yu-Gi-Oh sidekick. <laughs> It's true! While trying to engage in learning, he it. is summoned to the faculty room by this woman, the one who sells the children. Recently, a thing visited her office, flipping through middle school yearbooks in hopes of finding a wife. Yes, a wife. Marriage. True love. After thoroughly perusing... This is so weird. Who came up with this? Why? What is it? This is weird. This is really weird. The catalog of child brides, poor Tamori Hinawa was oh. chosen. We see his face. The one you're going to marry has been chosen. Jesus. Growing ever closer as the camera zooms in, his cold eyes staring unendingly at the future. Episode 2! We got married! This is a Moomin. Their name is Kananogi, and they take children for to marry them. Everyone is okay with this. 
They look like a banana with turkey drumstick arms and wear a... The whole everyone's okay with this thing is weird as well. Like, no one bats an eyelid. No one kind of questions it. This is really strange. Okay, I can't help but feel it gets weirder, though. Because, like, yes, this is strange. But compared to all the other stuff he just talked about, I think they are kind of weirder than this at the moment. ...scarf on their head like a polar bear babushka. Bear babushka. They're fast. They eat concrete. They know how to share. Oh. Wretched Kananogi and poor Tamori leave the town hall with their marriage certificate, and they begin the ritual head-sucking, the slimes of love. While having his head gummed, poor Tamori asks himself, how did this even happen? Would that I knew, child. Would that I knew. They are given a house. The Moomin stands in the door like a bear on two legs, ready to bring their full weight down on their unsuspecting wife. This is weird, so it's like, it's really freaking stupid, but it, given the choice to choose who it marries, but then it seems to have superhuman powers, like being able to eat cement and stuff, it's like it's... Oh no, the thing is fluffy. Very fluffy. Oh no, don't. Poor Tamori begins to have lewd thoughts about the moon and then- No, 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 what? Bashes his head against the wall as penance, just like mother would want. Episode 3! Classmate and wife. The wretched Kananogi sleeps like this. <laughs> They follow their new child bride to school, only to be stopped at the entrance. Though seemingly unable to enter the halls of learning, the wretched Kananogi does have some means of pressing their nose against the third floor window to watch their poor love. This is horrifying to everyone. Every this is... well, okay, so people are bothered by this then. What's up with his hair? He's a main character. Everyone except... And he's got piercings! Except for poor Sora Hikurakawa. They're still in that phase where they want to admire their wives, he <laughs> says, as the wretched Kananogi pushes their face against the glass barrier that separates them from the children. Poor Sora jokes that he is also a member of the Wives Club. Oh, God. Hiding his pain behind a bright smile. Poor Sora is married. He is married to this. A balding Pokemon. Their name is Fuhai. And they bathe together every day, with poor Sora massaging new hair growth formulae into Fuwai's decrepit scalp night after night. Poor Tomori Hinoa is jealous of this. What? No. Oh. No. 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 This is getting weirder. <laughs> I shouldn't have questioned it. I'm scared now. Episode 4. No. Transfer student and wife. In this episode, we learn that the wretched Kananogi has teeth. Daily, poor Tamori will make dinner for the concrete-eating freak to whom he is married. The wretched Kananogi does not eat the dinner, he eats concrete. But as a show of appreciation, he will inundate his spouse's head with the slimes of love, putting him into a state of pseudo-sexual bliss. Poor Sora thinks that this is weird. There is a new student at the school, oh my a new gosh. disciple of learning. Their name is Tsukitsu... Sukitska. They do not have a face. They do not have a anything. Nothing but their young wife. Poor Ichiya Mokusaibashi. A boy described as gloomy, sinister, and unnecessarily tall. He is a gruff character and independent. But upon seeing Tsukitska for the oh, first the time cool and acknowledging one. their lack of physical form as the embodiment of perfection, poor Ichiya ejaculated on the spot and begged the ball of ribbons for marriage. Unsatisfied. What is up with people in this world? It's so weird. E, they like actually get weird arousal from these weird things. Like this is like a creature that is doesn't even exist. There's nothing there. It's covered in bandages. Side with his husband's blank non-stare and longing to know their true feelings, he creates a face for his love in permanent marker. They seem happy. Episode 5! Because again, if, if it was not bothered, he wouldn't put a face on there in the first place either. Falling oh. day by day. Poor Tamori reveals to poor Sora that the wretched Kananogi has begun watching him poop and bathe. Poor Sora begins to sob with jealousy as Fuwai looks at him like, Dude, what the heck, bro? That's messed up, man. Like, whoa, like that is not a healthy relationship. That's... Oh, this... He's getting jealous. But the thing that he married and gets naked and scrubs down, it's just there, and he's like, what, what about me? 
I can be weird with you. It's like, ah! Dynamic, my dude, my man, like bro. We flash back, tumbling into the past to the moment when Fuai chose poor Sora to be their wife. The child is overjoyed, saying, This is the first time someone's picked me! I overflow with questions. Instantly, Fuai regrets the decision. They wanted a rad punk skater child with Tony Hawk tattoos and a half-baked attitude, and instead received a clingy, insecure twink of a boy with half of his first chest hair still stored in a box under his bed. Mistake. Cut to poor Tamori being watched in the bath. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he considers with some embarrassment the idea of his husband seeing his naked body, then confirms the horrid truth that the wretched Kananogi is always technically naked. Moomin Schlong. With his brief moment of puritanical hesitation temporarily abated, poor Tamori invites his husband to bathe. They're fast. They use their head covering to lather. Poor Tamori catches sight of the wretched Kananogi's tail in the bathwater, freely floating amidst the clay back and forth as the hair of a mermaid in the ocean brine, and fleeing the lavatory, poor Tamori discovers that he is not in fact straight, but hair-sexual. Yes, hair-sexual. Wow. A disciple of Heros, a pun that works just as well in English as it does in Japanese, which is neat. Episode but it's, 6, I mean, Exchanging it explains it. Rings. Husbands are hot. Wives are hot. Marriage is all the rage. People are doing it for fakesies now. So much so that it's becoming a problem. A government problem. No, Before how dare they? Is asked <laughs> by the woman who sells the children to find some way of proving that the marriage that she arranged between this child and this woman is a legitimate one. That, what, what, no. Is she... She sorted it out. You've chosen the person you want to marry. Like, what benefit? Although they're given a house and that, I suppose. But like, is that part of the contract? Why would people fake getting married to these things? That choose them. They choose. The wedding is on. A glorious day. There are photographers and Pokemon, and Skitska seems happy at least. Poor well, it's a drawn on smile. His husband's arms, cheering to the assembled crowd that this is the best day of his life. Before cans are tied to Kananogi's rump, and they rocket away from the scene like Buzz Lightyear rocketing away from that scene. Fast. The other poor wives, caught up in the passionate flames of matrimony, also catch wedding fever, desiring the informal social recognition of what has heretofore been a largely legal union. Skitska is frightened. The wretched Kananogi and poor Tamori, separated from their friends, walk down the streets as husband and wife, happily eating tin cans and snuggling into that soft, soft, intoxicating fur. There has to be something else to this. There has to be something else. This is just too strange. This is too strange. This is too weird. This is too weird. Episode 7, our first summer. <laughs> oh no, a beach episode. Sensei reminds the students that despite having the opportunity to have two and a half months of uninterrupted spousal bliss, they still have homework. Poor Sora, no. baller that he is, says, Nah, letting you know right now, Teach, I'm gonna be spending too much time with this thing's penis inside me to balance chemical equations. And he's right. Beach, fireworks, Skitska is happy. Stop. Viewer beware. You're in for a scare. Our poor group hears from poor Ichiha that couples who walk through dark tunnels together become closer. They would like that. Our group wants to be close. Confrontation! Oh my god, what the... <laughs> Another man has bumped into the wretched Kanonogi and felt his soft, supple, and arousingly furry body. That can't stand. Two and a half months pass. Summer vacation is over. Well, that's quite a time skip. I mean, it's not really. I mean, we've had more. <laughs> I mean, Naruto is... It was three years, wasn't it? Uh, what was Bartos? Was Bartos two? We return to North Jingu High School without a single panning shot of Kananogi in a bikini. But Kananogi Kini, alert! There's the a ass. new man. He's handsome, smart, everything that poor Tamori could have been. Just as King Solo Man split the Gordian baby in twain, this man has two husbands. Their names are Roku and Nana. My God. Two waifus. <laughs> 
and they are both married to student council president Giga Chad Sukchiki Yosei Tetsushi. They like his glasses, regard his smile, his elegant rectangular frames, his tasteful neck ornament, and the depleted battery of his polo shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tamori doesn't stand a chance. Oh. He introduces himself to this god amongst men only for Roku and Nana, fierce and bloodthirsty defenders of their wife, to, to fucking destroy him with words. Poor Tamori is not super high spec. There is no, no need for other wives. Verily suffers our hero appointed linguistic death. Episode 8 Sports Festival Cheerleading. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god healthy competition amongst the youth Dude. we learn of the fierce rivalry between poor Ichiya and poor Giga Chad Sachikiyose Tetsushi they will run it is unimaginably important that we learn which of them runs faster but that isn't all ball tossing concrete yeah. eating oh. cavalry but wait what is that thing there are girls at this school shut your mouths and affix your <laughs> eyes to the screen the relay race begins cheerleading they're fast poor Ichiya and poor Giga Chad Sachikiyose Tetsushi repeat the same three frame run cycle like 20 times in their quest for athletic supremacy cheerleading skitska seems happy their love propels poor ichia forward run poor ichia achieve the ribbon with all the poise of a dancer <laughs> i was gonna say that pose <laughs> And all the strength and speed of a dancer, poor Ichia overtakes poor Giga Chad Sachikiyose Tetsushi and becomes the winner of the race. Celebra who are you? Celebrations <laughs> abound. Our poor group cheerleads themselves home as champions. Episode oh, 9, God. Flu and Wife. Flu and wife. It's cold now. There's a flu. There's a oh, wife. No. There's a moomin. Poor Tomori succumbs to that most human of urges. The urge to succumb to a viral infection. But he is grateful. Having a viral oh. infection means that he cannot infect his beloved husband. I, what? That's not how that... Anyway. The wretched oh, Kananogi carries their bride through the streets, ignoring the rightfully horrified onlookers. When next we see poor Tamori, he is surrounded by poor Ichiya and poor Giga Chad Sachikiyose Tetsushi. They're friends now. Properly immunized friends. Ah, the good old days. The wretched Kananogi, <laughs> fearing for the life of their poor enslaved spouse seeks to end illness with a hunger strike. It, it works. Good for him. Yay. For him. Episode oh. 10. Everyone's white day. Everyone's white now. Skitska, Kananogi. Poor Tamori. Tamori engages in craftsmanship to create a present slash meal for his love. He laments that the present he created is not big enough to express the size of his affection for this, so he makes a bigger one. Quantifiable affection, a gift, the slimes of love. Poor Tamori puts it next to all the other enshrined meal leavings that the wretched Kanonogi has thoughtfully given him over the months of marriage. He giddily kicks. Fuwai wants to become a bag. They settle for using their blood-stained paws to create a heart for their beloved skater twink. Skitska seems happy. Happy enough. Skitska looks happy every time. Oh, this is so weird. This is so strange. To kill? We cut to poor Giga Chad Sachikiyose Tetsushi gently criticizing the appearance of his husbands who gaze at him in amazement as he consumes the extremely mediocre cookies that they stole from the cooking club. Wah, wah. Wah. Episode 11, first anniversary. Imperceptibly slowly yet astronomically fast, our beautiful Earth completes her orbit around the sun. The whole right. of a year has passed ah. since the wretched Kananogi stole this child. None of the interesting parts of this episode have anything to do with that. Fuwai, with their crippling fear of loneliness, wraps themselves in a cocoon of poor Sora's belongings, sleeping on their video game console so as to be close to the thing about which their spouse cares the most. Poor Ichiya has a terrifying dream about his spouse disappearing or getting naked. One of those. 
that one. Reminiscing on these wonderful Matra moments makes the boys cry, and poor Tamori leaps from the window, the third floor window, into the waiting mouth of Kwananogi Swan. Though he does question if Moomins are even capable of understanding what an anniversary is. <sighs> <laughs> this is I keep saying it I thought there has to be some sort of weird twist that but no it just keeps it just keeps going doesn't it it just keeps being it keeps being strange episode 12 how many episodes Feelings are there? forever together we made it the end the soccer oh, okay. trees are blooming it's a matter it starts to rain. It's a metaphor. We cut to the title card of poor Tamori looking sad, sad as the oh creature God. holds an umbrella above his head. It's a metaphor. A harsh storm threatens to metaphorically destroy the metaphorical <laughs> cherry blossoms. So the wretched Kanonogi slips out of his home to fastly run to where the cherry blossom is and hold their umbrella over it to keep it safe and dry. It's a metaphor. They stand, unflinching against the torrential rains, protecting innocent beauty against the harsh and apathetic ravages of nature, but soft. The rain stops, not because of this at all, but instead because Roku and Nana yelled at God. You go, Yeah, creatures. you tell him. <laughs> Coleman would be proud. The gang gathers for a cherry blossom viewing. Skitska seems happy. It's because they reproduced last night. Then, what's this? A party for poor Tamori's anniversary birthday. Since when it's poor Tamori's birthday. Pop the poppers, shake the maracas. No longer is poor Tamori a moon. 16 year old child bride he is now a moomin 17 year old child bride i love a character art what are you <laughs> he's asking every time <laughs> <laughs> the wretched Kananogi takes one more chance to stare blankly at the viewer, then turns their attention to their wife. The child looks at the vaguely banana-shaped bear Babushka, his eyes meeting one of theirs, and the episode just kinda ends. Thus concludes the anime where the boy marries a moomin. Never have I before or since felt quite the god damn it, there's a mo- The mo I could find no oh. official translation of the Jengai San no Yome manga, which means that Yu Ayakawa's dreaded work is currently contained accessible only to those who dare seek it out. Roughly eight chapters worth of content was adapted to screen out of 22. 22 that have been translated. There are like 40-something chapters of this story. And believe it or not, those 40-something chapters contain answers. Answers that lead only to further puzzlement. Mainly, we learn from these random shoppers in a throwaway line in chapter 16, verse 1, that okay. these creatures take child brides are relatively new in town. They just showed up and started stealing children for holiest matrimony and it was right. fine. Poor Tamori creates a concrete effigy of himself for Kananogi to eat, then gets jealous when Kananogi wants to eat it instead of him. Skitska gets naked, a lot. She also starts keeping a kitten in her head and has an attendant demon. We meet this girl, yes, a girl, a bride, a female wife poor yori who is explicitly married against her will to this thing this thing their name is lachian eckhart san and they are worshipped as a god they can be this big or this big they eat misfortune nothing but useful they save a child from a burning building and the child reacts like this? Kanonogi lives at the bleeding edge of fashion and cannot be denied, ever. Kanonogi begins to assimilate poor Tamori. This is getting out of hand. Now there are 40 of them. Hush. Did you hear that? Poor Tamori acquires a stalking man. A stalking man who- wait, what? Your- your what? This is poor Mikoto Kanonogi. He is the wretched Kanonogi's ex-wife. which is a plot twist I was not expecting. Watch your back, poor Tamori. Hell hath no fury oh like a former God. male child bride scorned by a banana bear. Drama. 
rivalry, but that's not all. In a heel turn that would rival the most ambitious of telenovelas, poor Makoto is not only not poor, he is not Kananogi's ex-wife. Somehow, this mouse-brained dunce boy misinterpreted the fact that his parents adopted the wretched Kananogi for tax purposes as an arranged marriage to a Moomin. <laughs> But that's not all, because this revelation does not change his behavior in the slightest. Underage incestuous Moomin infidelity. And that has to be the end of it. I have no idea what is contained within the 16 or so chapters that I don't have access to, but my job is done. Yep, now gone. you have seen what <laughs> I have it. seen, and you have felt what I have felt. If, for whatever reason, you've decided that the story wherein a child is married to a Moomin is worth your time, you can find it on Crunchyroll. Thank oh. you to all my patrons for oh. your support. I probably would not have made this video without you, especially today's lucky patron, Adam Saunders, who has been supporting the channel for six wonderful months. Thank you very much, Adam. And thank you very much to everyone else, all of my viewers, all of my patrons, everyone whose name you see here and everyone whose name you don't. If you want to have a chance at becoming today's lucky patron, visit patreon.com slash explanation point to find out how. You can also join our Discord server and our weekly game get-togethers. All kinds of good stuff there. Next video, we're going back to hardcore analytic content in my usual style. I'm really tempted to check out the Your Lie in April one because I'm a big fan of Your Lie in April. <laughs> like, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um... Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you're alerted when that goes up. And until next time, this has been Explanation Point, signing out. Yeah, I might check the Your Lie in April. That was really strange. That was so weird. That was so weird. I was waiting for like a. It just kept going. And then the weird twists in the manga. But that was fun. That was entertaining. But I don't think I'll watch it. <laughs> I don't think I will. Anyway, thank you to my patrons. If you want to have your name at the end of every video I upload and to be able to watch patron exclusive uh, reaction videos, uh, link is in the description to the Patreon page. One dollar a month is all. I suppose John's great. The appreciate. Thank you for that. Thank you all for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe. We haven't really leave comments below. Let me know what I should watch and discuss in future videos. I'll see you guys. Thanks, time.